Well, hi, everybody. I'm Chris Barton. Hello. Who are you? I'm Jennifer. Jennifer Ziegler. <laughs> and this is Ernie, looking off camera at the moment. And this is the video for the September issue of Bartography Express. So thank you for joining us. Jenny, tell them, uh, tell them where we were yesterday, what we were up to. We were at the Library Resource Roundup in San Antonio for ESC 20. You want to explain what that is? Yes, ESC is Texan Education Speak for Education or Educational Service Center. So there are, I think, 20 different regions around the state, and each one has a service center, and they have uh, professional development. And so there are, I guess, 20 of them, and this was, this was Region 20, so headquartered in San Antonio. So we were down there yesterday to... Uh, talk with librarians and, and present to librarians. Yeah, I really enjoyed your presentation that you did. Oh, thank and, you. Um, yeah, and, and I always enjoy just, just how fired up I get at these events with uh, um, all the educators and reminding us of our mission. And we got to see each other's presentations, which we don't always get to do. I know sometimes, That's true. sometimes, sometimes <laughs> we're, we're, we're scheduled opposite each other <laughs> when we're at the same, same event. So I got to see you do your, your brand new missions and motives presentation, which was terrific. Oh, thank you. And you got thank to you. see me talk very quickly about a whole bunch of fiction and nonfiction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, so, that was, so this was Region 20. I, I spoke, I did a day-long presentation at Region 10 up in the Dallas area um, back over the summer. A few years ago, I spoke at Region, I don't know what number it was, it was based in Waco. So that's like three down, 17 to go. So <laughs> if you're in one of those other 17 regions, hint, hint. <laughs> well, also, you, um, you've you been doing a lot of appearances and a lot of talking lately. Lately, you've been, um, in addition to ESC, I think we mentioned on the last video that you've been hitting the road and visiting a lot of schools. And um, you, I've noticed, have cultivated a, a sort of um, look for yourself for when you give presentations. And I was wondering if you could um, talk to us about this look of yours. My, my your look. Fashion, your outfit. My, my fashion is, 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 <laughs> is wide bear shirts. And the first wide bear shirt I ever owned was the black one that I was wearing when you and I got married. Yeah. But since then, I, I like this shirt an awful lot. So I've... I've, I've For fashion I've, reasons or practical reasons? Both. I think they look good, but also they got four big pockets in front. And so it's very easy to have like index cards and remote control and you know anything else I might need to have because like when I'm when I'm reading you know, Mighty Truck and I make the sound of the helicopter like this yeah you know, but I'm, I'm holding the book so I have to have somewhere to put the, the, the remote control for the presentation while I'm doing that so it's very ah. practical but what's not practical is when you have a Wyabara who's like whose button starts spontaneously slipping out of the buttonholes as happened to me um, on my recent visit to Fort Bend ISD so I retired that one and got this brand. It, was, it wasn't that bad. It was not of, of Janet Jackson's Super Bowl proportions, thankfully. Um, but I noticed, and uh, so I retired that one. I got got this new wide bear shirt, and I debuted it at, at the Library Resource Roundup yesterday, and laundered it earlier today. So this is this is nice. I'm glad you made that clear. <laughs> So one thing we talked about last time, or, or one thing that we didn't talk about last time, to the extent that, uh, that it is still a secret, was your big book news. So tell them, tell right, them about your book right, now that it's yeah. public. Um, yeah, I had to be very mysterious last time. Um, so it has now been announced uh, in my Scholastic Middle Grade series about the Brewster Triplets, which I believe the series title will now be the Brewster Triplets series, or a Brewster Triplets book. Um, so book three is coming out next summer, and it's called Revenge of the Happy Campers. And uh, so that's been a lot of fun to research and to write. And in this one, um, the triplet girls uh, are out of their, their hometown. So they're out of their comfort zone, and they are camping with their beloved Aunt Jane. And as in the previous books, there's a great cause that they have to fight for and um, so uh, there's mayhem and hijinks and some kooky side characters and uh, and it's know. really really good I've gotten to read I've gotten to read it quite a bit along the way so it's fantastic Thank and you. So what, sometime next summer ish is when it's coming out? yes it's a summer release and and I will probably have a, um, a release date soon and a cover reveal so 
So we're not done still talking more. about Revenge of the Happy Campus. <laughs> still Campuses. more to reveal, right? Still some mystery left. Um, but also, yeah, um, you are kind of now a scholastic author as well. To, to, to the extent that Whoosh, Lonnie Johnson's Super Soaking Stream of Inventions is going to be available as a paperback through Scholastic Book Clubs, yes indeed. So I got, to, I got the letter Look at that. just today that says, this is from my <laughs> publisher, Charles Bridge, I'm pleased to inform you that Scholastic Book Clubs has licensed a paperback version of Whoosh, Lonnie Johnson's Super Soaking Stream of Inventions. So that's Yay. really cool. It's a... Uh, there was a, I know there was a Scholastic paperback for Shark versus Train years ago, and I'm delighted that there's going to be one for, uh, for Lonnie Johnson's Super Soaking Stream of Inventions. And, and last time I found out that it was in Scholastic when someone, I think somebody I went to high school with, emailed me a photo of, of, of me on the, <laughs> on the order form for Scholastic. That was the first I heard of it. So this time uh, I got at least some, some advance word. notice. A, official word and maybe even advance notice. I haven't heard that, that it's already available, but I'm looking forward to seeing those paperbacks well that was a high point you've had a lot of high points lately um when you've been on your travels uh -huh. you um we we miss each other and uh we keep in touch via phone and and facetime and uh, i love hearing about your day and there's always a lot of high points but i'm wondering if you could choose one moment from your travels last few weeks that you can share one of the high points yes so my my school visits are high points there there i i have great moments at all those but one thing outside the school visits that happened that was really really you know it was really a thrill for me was i got to get together when i was in the houston area with the great granddaughter of a, as yet unnamed um subject of a nonfiction book i want to write and uh, so I, I wanted to, to let her know kind of where I was coming from, what kind of work I had done before. So I gave her copies of, of some of my, of my previous picture books, including the Dayglow Brothers. And then that night, she texted me a photo of her own grandson mm -hmm. holding his, you know, because it became his copy of the Dayglow Brothers, I guess, as soon as it entered the house. So this is a photo of the great, great, great grandson of somebody that I want to write a book about holding a copy of my very first book. And like, I, I wouldn't have, have ever thought to wish for that to happen, but it's, it's marvelous <laughs> that it did. So uh, that, 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 that was a fantastic feeling. Mm -hmm. um, so tell me what you've been reading. Oh, well, I have, um, I have a couple. I think, I think we're each reading a couple books. Yes. Um, so Karen Harrington is a favorite of mine. Um, she, she's also a, a Texas-based author, and uh, this is her latest, and it's called May Ray, and I, I, I'm not done with it yet, but I'm loving it, and if it's uh, like her other books, it's just going to be fantastic about a boy who survives a traumatic event. I don't think I'm ruining anything by saying it, but it's a plane crash, but other things are happening, and uh, just, I love the way she writes, and, and I love her characters. Also, um, Kate Mesner, I admire the heck out of her. She's not only do I admire her for her writing, but also just as a person. And so this is her latest one, which also um, is, centers on family and centers on um, survival and coping with a difficult situation. And in this case, it's an older sibling that is struggling with drugs. Um, so I'm really looking forward to finishing this one as well. So tell us about what you're reading. So I'm reading slowly, because that's my way, but I'm reading Two Naomi's, which is a new middle grade novel. It was just published a couple of weeks ago, a week yeah. and a half ago. And it was written, it's co-written by two friends of ours, Olga Masola Rude Perkovich and Audrey Vernick. And one of the things I love about this book is that it's written, um, well, it, it, it centers on two characters, You'll never believe this, but their names are Naomi. Um, and and the, the story here is that, that you know, these two girls na named Naomi, these two twin girls, um, the mother of one and the father of the other began dating. And so, you know, to add to the awkwardness of having your, your parent start, you know, getting into a romantic relationship with somebody, um, you know, that, the, the, that somebody has a, a daughter who has the same name as you. And is the same age as you. So, but one of the things I love about this is, you know, I I know 
uh, Audrey's voice so well, and I know Bimby's voice so well just by by not having read their previous books, but also being friends with them. And I love seeing pieces of both of their voices in each of these characters, and that's that's a, a delight to yeah. say, oh, that's 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 an that's an Audreyism, or that's that's something that I, I can tell that that came from from Bimmy, or I, I think I can tell. Him, right. I may be wrong about that. We'll have to call him up each time and say, did you write this part? I know, I know who's, who's who wrote the word baby head. That's that's classic Audrey Vernick right there. <laughs> and I'm also reading uh, Mexico Biography of Power, which is slightly different from Two Naomi's. You're gonna uh, thank you because it, it's a very it's a very heavy book. It's, it's a very thick book. If I do this, if I do these videos for a year, I might say I'm still reading Mexico a Biography of Power, <laughs> but it's a, a, a modern a, a political history of modern Mexico from 1810 to 1996. So it's not ultra modern Mexico, but it's still pretty pretty comprehensive. So uh, that's partially for research purposes, but partially just for my own edification because I wanted that. There's a lot that I don't know about Mexico, and and uh, I'm I'm learning a lot through that. And Ernie, Ernie's not reading anything, but he is waiting patiently for something. Will you, will you grab that little yeah. thing for him? Yeah, you've been good. He's, Here's he, your reward. This is why he's been so attentive. So there he and goes. And he's off. He's out of here, and <laughs> we are out of here. We will see you guys in October. Thank you so much for thank watching the video. Thank you for all that you do. And thank you for subscribing to Bartography Express. Happy reading.